Okay, here we go with our uh, first test, kind of a first trial of our uh, new homemade uh, roller mill. Uh, here we've got a couple of rollers. I'll describe a little bit later how we made those. Got them on a shaft, just a couple little uh, uh, bushings here uh, pressed into the rollers for our uh, bearings. Uh, here's a uh, 3D uh, printed uh, little uh, handle. We're going to snap that on there. Uh, down in the uh, handle shaft here, we're going to drop a spring. And then uh, here's our little mixing bowl. So we're going to uh, uh, place the roller in the mixing bowl and then put it on the, uh, the shaft here so that we can drive it and turn it. Uh, the last thing we have to do though is we've got this little uh, uh, spatula or squeegee if you will that's going to ride inside the bowl to keep the sides clean. So we're going to just stick that in the uh, uh, hole here and try to get this assembly to uh, come together. No guarantees how this is going to work or uh, or not work, but uh, let's uh, give it a shot here. So we're going to slide this on the shaft, slide the bowl underneath it, tuck our spatula down in there, get everything kind of pressed in place here like that. That doesn't look too bad. Oh, I hope this uh, camera angle here is doing it some justice. We're going to do a dry run here just to see what happens before we try it with some real ink down in there. Now in this case, these uh, rollers are going to ride right on the bottom of the glass. Maybe in the future we'll, uh, we'll put another bottom in there. But all of this stuff is uh, very, very low cost. I think I've probably got about... Uh, five or six dollars invested in here and four of that was for the uh, the glass bowl this is one of the uh, you know uh, Pyrex type uh, refrigerator uh, bowls with the little plastic lid and we'll be putting all of the uh, the files for all of these parts and a little bit more description on uh, Thingiverse when we get done here so uh, Let's uh, turn things on here and we'll see what happens. Okay, so far so good. Of course now there's uh, no ink in there, so uh, let's uh, give it a shot with some ink. The other thing I'll mention here is uh, in some of my earlier uh, mixing tests I was using my drill press. Here I've, I've got a little uh, benchtop milling machine and it's got a nice little electronic uh, speed control so uh, that's what we're using. It allows me to get uh, lower speeds and a little bit uh, easier to get some variable speed. So uh, we're going to be doing that. So we'll uh, stop it here and uh, pick it up after we've uh, poured some ink in there. Okay. About as interesting as uh, watching the grass grow. I'll throw a couple more comments out there about the construction of this uh, roller. The, uh, the spatula, if you haven't guessed, is a foam paintbrush with the, uh, the foam ripped off. Inside is a nice little uh, flexible spatula, if you will, and that uh, is just sitting in a uh, hole in the uh, uh, 3D printed drive column there. Actually, you can see we've got a coaxial uh, square drive, and I dropped a little spring down in between the two. So we've got a constant pressure uh, in between the uh, smaller inner drive shaft uh, chucked in the, uh, the mill and the, uh, the larger uh, outer uh, square drive part of the, uh, the roller assembly. So, so far so good. We're getting over a uh, little bit of the uh, Happy New Year cold here, so uh, bear with me. The 
uh, graphite we're using is an off-the-shelf product uh, from West Marine. Uh, West Marine is a uh, marine boating supply company and they uh, sell cans of this graphite powder to go with their epoxies for uh, boat repair. They, uh, they claim if you need a nice uh, smooth surface or slippery surface to whatever you're patching, uh, I think you throw in 10% of graphite into the epoxy, so that was readily available. I have no idea what the uh, size of the graphite is. It's a fine powder, but uh, where it seems the uh, graphite uh, recommended is a nice 5 micron uh, graphite. Uh, I have no idea what we've got here, but we'll run the test before and after the grinding and uh, see what kind of improvement we hopefully get as we uh, grind things up. Another little note on the uh, the 3D printing. Uh, some of my uh, earlier parts that I made were a PLA, probably the most readily available lowest cost material. Uh, these here I've uh, uh, kicked it up a notch from the PLA uh, uh, material and printed in a uh, a PET G. I guess that's P E T G or uh, is that polyethylene? Anyway, PETG is what the uh, 3D printing guys call it. It's, uh, uh, I think, a better material for these applications. First of all, it's a lot more hydrophobic, so uh, uh, it cleans and rinses off a lot better. Uh, the second thing is uh, it requires a higher temperature for printing, which means it also stays a lot more rigid. If I had this uh, bowl on a hot plate uh, while I was mixing and stirring, uh, I had to uh, heat up the uh, CMC water mixture oh, probably to about uh, 100 degrees uh, F just to get... Uh, the CMC to uh, readily mix and the PLA stir I had was starting to uh, soften even at those temperatures so uh, this was printed at uh, uh, 240 degrees uh, C nozzle temperature <laughs>